One of the fundamental concepts to understand in React is the life cycle of components. In a previous lesson, I talked about how components can be likened to living things, which means they can be born, they can grow, and they can also die. So when it comes to components in React, you have three major phases. You have the mounting phase, which is when the component is born, when the component is mounted on the DOM. You have the updating phase, which is when the component grows. And the idea here is that the component state changes. And then you also have the unmounting phase, which is when the component dies. And this means when the component is unmounted from the DOM. And this is the component life cycle. Now you're probably thinking, why do you need to know this? Well, it's important to know this because there are some times where you would want to trigger a certain code when a component is mounted and sometimes we want to trigger a certain code when a component is unmounted and i'm going to be showing you some examples of how you can do that in react now so far in this course we've been looking at functional components but for this lesson i'll be using class components to explain how life cycles work and the reason why i'm doing this is because a good way to understand life cycles in components i believe is by starting with class components so in future lessons we'll look at how to apply the concept of life cycles to functional components but Let's look at the class components here. Now, I'm not going to be diving deep into how class components work. I'm just using them for the purpose of life cycles, but I'll have a dedicated lesson where we dive deeper into how class components work. First thing I'm gonna do is to run my development server. Now, I have made some changes on this application from the previous lesson, and let me briefly go over the change. Before, we had this show pricing cards condition where we rendered this, and this isn't what we were rendering before. Before, we were rendering something like this. So before, we had a div, and then we rendered some cards, but I have moved that code to this pricing cards component. I'm doing that so I can show you how life cycles work so if you see anything different that is it so now we use the pricing cards component here and then we pass these cards to the cards prop remember this cards is coming from this array here and when you go to pricing cards this component takes the cards and then i do something here i manage states for random cards and random cards is basically just different items in the array taking different positions taking random positions so i have this function here which random randomizes an array for me so here i have states called random cards and the default value i pass to this random cards is by calling this function randomize r with the cards the cards that i receive from the parent component which in this case is the app component and then here i have a function called randomize cards and when you call this function it simply just updates the state of random cards by calling randomize r again with the current random cards state and then here i render the random cards i also have a button here this button when you click on it is just going to call this function so this is the button here when you click on the button we get the cards randomized and you can see how they are changing positions and then here i declared prop types for the pricing cards we've looked at prop types in a previous lesson okay that's what i've done so far as usual the code for this demo would be linked in the video description so you can also go through the code if anything is unclear let's now talk about life cycles now here we have a functional component let's start by converting this to a class component i'm going to comment this for now I am going to have class pricing cards and this is going to extend the component class from the React library. So I'm going to come here and import the component class. So here I'm going to say extends components. And now when it comes to classes, the first method you would use is the constructor. And this is where you initialize props or states for that component. Let me make this smaller so that you're not distracted by all that's happening there. So this constructor is going to receive props props then here i'm going to call super props to initialize the props for this component and then i'm also going to have states which is going to be available on the this variable so this dot state is going to be randomized r and then we're going to call this dot props dot cards so the props is going to be available on this dot props and you set state on this dot state this is a class component a bit of the syntax here is different and then another method you can use in a class component is render and this is where you define what should be rendered on the dom and then you can now return what the ui is going to look like so for this return i'm just going to copy everything that i have here come here and replace this 
I'm also going to create a method. You remember in this functional component, we have this function called randomized cards. Now I'm going to take that and create that as a method in this class here. But because this is a class, I cannot do const randomized cards. Instead, I'm just going to do randomized cards like this. And here, this is an arrow function, but let's make this a regular function for now. Later on, we'll change it to an arrow function and I'll show you why we are doing that. When we want to set the state in a class component, what you want to call is this dot set state and then we can call randomize r this dot state dot random cards so i'm going to come here and i'm going to put this like in an object so this is going to be random cards property and then we have this and then when you call this method this is now going to update the state this should also be an object so we're going to pass a property random cards and we're going to pass this randomize function again and then here i need to put a parenthesis okay now also here for the button we are calling randomize cards but because this is a class component and we created this method in this class this is now going to be this dot randomize cards and then here instead of doing random cards like this we're now going to do this dot state dot random cards like this and now everything should work another thing you can do is object destructuring so here we can destructure the state so we we have this dot state and then we can get the random cards from this state and we can use the random cards here so instead of using this dot state dot random cards we can do the destructuring up here and then use the random cards variable we have destructured down here so now when you click on this button you should get random cards but i'm clicking on it and nothing is happening now this is where the problem is coming from here we are using a regular function and when you create regular functions or methods in javascript they are going to automatically create their own this variable so this function now has its own this variable and that is why this this variable is no longer pointing to the component and that is why we cannot call this dot set state if we should open the console you should see the error so if i click on this button the error says cannot read properties of undefined reading set state that is because this this is no longer pointing to the component i have a video where i dive deeper into how the this variable in javascript works i would recommend you check it out i'll link it in the video description but what we want to do here now is instead of having a regular function we're not going to convert this to an arrow function so i have this and i have this and now i have converted this to an arrow function and by converting it to an arrow function this is no longer going to create its own this variable and now this this is going to point to the component and i can now call this dot set state so if we come back to our ui now and i click on this now you can see our button is now working as we want it to now there are more methods that we can use in class components but at the basic level you need the constructor method and you need the render method for you to create your class components and what should be rendered you can create your own methods but there are also other methods that you can use in class components now you're probably thinking okay where does life cycle come in all of this now let me show you a quick example let's say this button had an id of my button and then let's say in this render method we want to get that button using document dot get element by id so you have my button equals document dot get element by id and then you pass my button now let's say i do console dot log my button if i should open the console here if i refresh what you can see is that console log my button is returning null because the document as at the time this was run doesn't have any element with an id of my button remember i said earlier that sometimes you want to run a piece of code when a component is mounted as at the time we we're running this code the component has not yet been mounted and that is why this button is not yet on the dom before we we can query it so in this case we want to run this code when the component has been born when it has been mounted and this is where we can use one method in class components called component did mount this method is going to be called by react when this component has been mounted and now if i should take this from here and put it in component did mount like this if i open the console now you can see that we indeed get 
the button with an id of my button by doing it like this we are ensuring that component has been mounted before we are querying the dom and this is what makes up the mounting phase of a component's lifecycle. the mounting phase involves a constructor for initializing the props and the state it also contains the render method for what you want to render on the dom for the first time and then you have component did mount which is executed after that component has been mounted now there are more methods provided in react that you can use for when a component is mounted but we're just going to stick with these three and you can think of more examples of what you can do when a component is mounted for example maybe you want to make an api request to get a list of products from your database or you want to subscribe to something if you try to do some of those things when a component has not mounted yet you might bump into errors but by doing this at this stage you're ensuring that your component has mounted the way you would like it to mount maybe you also render a loading icon that shows getting data and then maybe you get a particular data and you want to update state with that data you can also come here to then do this dot set state with the data that you get from the api there are more examples we're going to look at all of these examples as we move into handling life cycles in functional components now let's talk about the updating phase like i said the updating phase is that phase where the component state changes so here while we are clicking this button and the state here is changing this is the updating phase and we also have methods provided from react that we can use to execute code as the updating phase of course one of those methods is should component update uh, by the way i just remembered i showed you an example of using this dot set state here this is also not going to work so you have to change this to an arrow function there are also other ways you can manage this in a class component it doesn't always have to be arrow functions you can bind your this or do other stuff let's just use arrow function as the solution for this example now coming to shoot components dot update let me just make this an arrow function even if i may not be using the this now this function allows you to decide if a component should update or not and this is one thing i love that the react team did because this is a very good naming this naming already tells you what this method is going to do should your component update yes or no true or false now let's say we return false now if i come here and i click on this button you can see that no matter how much i click on this button the component never updates so you can already imagine that by default this method returns true but you can choose to return false you're, you're probably thinking why would i want to return false well it's possible that when your state updates to something specific you don't want that to cause a re-render so you can maybe check that if state is blah 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 then don't bother re-rendering but if state is something else then return true so that the component can re-render another method that you have is component did updates which is similar to component did mount this method is run when the component successfully updated so let's say i have console log hey i up Updated. let me also come here to remove this console log from component did mount now if we come to the console here if i click on this button well because we're returning false here the component doesn't update but now if i should return true if i click on this button you can see hey i updated if i click on the button again hey i updated so you can also run certain code here let's say there is a particular state that you are watching and maybe when that state changes you want to call an api or you want to run some analytics or run some login whatever it is that's what you can do here so as a component update you run your code here and the other method that can be used in the updating phase is well the render so the render is used in the mounting phase for defining what the ui would be the first time but also when your component updates when the state changes the render method will be used to render the new ui with the new state so for the updating phase you have methods like should component update component did update and render there are also more methods that are available for you in the updating phase but at a basic level you should be using this sometimes you might not even be using should component update but that also exists and let's talk about the unmounting phase like i said the unmounting phase is when the component dies when the component is unmounted from the dom now if we go back to app.gsx what you see here is that we have this button called update states and when update state is called it sets the show pricing cards to true or false and here we have a conditional rendering where if the show pricing cards is 
false then we do not render the pricing card so if i come here and i click on update states this is going to unmount the pricing cards from the dom as well as the heading because we have a state for show heading which is also updated when we call update states if we click on this again show pricing cards now becomes true and then this component is reborn it is mounted again so now coming to pricing cards here's what i can do let's say i have a console log that says i am born we now have a method called component will unmount this method is called when the component is about to be unmounted it will unmount so just before the component is unmounted from the dom this method is called and here we can say i am living i'm also going to come to app.gsx here and move this console log i am rendered so that we can read the console more clearly i'm also going to come to main.gsx and remove this strict mode this strict mode is what is causing the components to be rendered multiple times i'm going to explain that in a separate lesson okay now that i have this if i should open the console you see i am born which is coming from component did mount i am born when we click on update state and that component is unmounted you see we have i am living coming from component will unmount if i click on update state again and that component is remounted reborn you see i am born and if we click on this again i am living this method is very useful when you want to clean up side effects we're going to look in more detail what that means in upcoming lessons but just a summary of that is sometimes you have side effect you have things that are currently running while the component is mounted and when the component is about to be unmounted you want to clean those things so it doesn't affect performance or memory of your application let's say when the component is mounted you set a timeout which is a side effect in this case and this timeout is going to run every one second and this is just going to say hello hi hello now when we refresh and the component is mounted you see we have hello hi hello you have it just once sorry not set timeout i wanted to use set interval so that it's running continuously okay so if you refresh now you have hello i hello the first time you have second time third time fourth time now what happens is when you unmount this from the dom you see that you still have that hello hi hello still going on even though the components that actually trigger this interval has been unmounted from the dom now this is where you want to clean that up so as the component is unmounting you want to stop that side effect you want to stop that interval so what we can do here now is that we can have a variable called interval id which is going to be null by default then here because set interval returns an id for that interval we can now assign this dot interval id to be set interval and then here in this on mount we can now call clear interval and then we pass the this dot interval id so what happens now is when we refresh the component is mounted the interval is running it's going and it's going but when the component is unmounted the interval is cleared and it is no longer running so this is an example of the things you can do in components will unmount when you have something that is running here maybe an event listener a subscription whatever it is as that component is unmounted and that side effect is not needed anymore then you can clean it up by removing it from here and of course when the component is on again the interval is going to be run again it keeps going the component is unmounted and it leaves so this is the unmounting phase and in the unmounting phase this is the major method that you'll be using i think there are a couple of other methods but this is the major method that you would be using and i hope that this now shows you why life cycles are important because at different stages or phases of a component's life there are certain code that you want to trigger sometimes if you trigger a code at the wrong phase you might get an error or an unexpected value or maybe your application might even crash so this is why these life cycle methods are important so that you can run that piece of code at the right time when you actually want to run it this whole concept of life cycles that we have looked at in this lesson can also be applied to functional components and nowadays you'd find it mostly used in functional components than in class components i just thought to show you this class component example because this is what helped me understand life cycles better and i think it will help you too so as we move forward in this course keep this same idea of life cycles in your mind because i'll be showing you how to apply this when it comes to functional components if you're enjoying this course so far please do me a favor by sharing it with others you can either share the playlist share this video particularly or you can share the course website simplereactjs.com